I just want to preface uh, my talk with the fact that I am not a uh, conch expert or a scientist, but rather I'm just merely reporting results. So um, this is the overview of what my talk is going to be about. We're going to talk a little bit about the description of the problem, what's happening with the conch fishery. I'm going to go into um, some of our responses looking at the CAP, the CAP uh, survey, its methodology, findings, and recommendations, as well as what we're currently working on now in building a sustainable uh, conch fishery. So why is conch so important? There is no doubt that conch is an integral part of Bahamian society. In fact, conch is a cultural icon and is an image within the Bahamian landscape. Much so that it has become deeply embedded in the psyche and culture of Bahamians. In fact, it seems impossible to envision a Bahamas without conch. In terms of diet, who could resist conch fritters, cracked conch, scorch conch, conch chowder? and the world-famous conch salad. Conch has been a staple in the Bahamian diet for over 400 years, and it has been harvested in the Caribbean basin from the first occupation of human beings. And what of its economic importance? Queen conch is worth an estimated four to five million dollars annually, and supplies meat for both the local and foreign market. In 2014, approximately 545,000 pounds of conch meat were exported, generating up to $3.2 million. More importantly, the conch industry continues to provide thousands of jobs, both indirectly and directly for Bahamians. So, what's the big problem? Well, our demand for conch has grown exponentially over the years, contributing to a significant decline in conch populations across the region. For example, countries such as Honduras, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, observed a sharp decline in conch populations due to high exploitation rates. In 2002, these three countries made up to 73% of all conch exports to the U.S., while the Bahamas contributed to a mere 3%. At the time, it was believed that the conch populations were being overexploited in Honduras, Haiti, and the DR. And in response, the Convention on International Trade of Endangered Species, otherwise known as CITES, recommended that all countries prohibit the import of conch from Honduras, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. So, a quest the next question arises, who is creating the demand? According to the National Marine Fisheries Service, the U.S. and France were the largest importers of conch meat um, globally. Together, they imported over 97% of all conch meat. And the U.S., in fact, imported 80% alone. So this then begs the question, has the, dem the demand led to the decline? In terms of a national perspective, at the same time, scientists, resource managers, and fishers began to observe an increasing number of areas in the Bahamas where conch numbers were declining. According, according to research conducted by Community Conch, the density of queen conch has declined by more than 90% since the early 1990s in fished areas in the Exuma Keys. Surveys in other areas throughout the Bahamas also suggests that some populations of queen conch have declined below the densities required for reproductive success, limiting the ability of populations to recover unless the fishing pressure is reduced. So definitely conch numbers have been declining throughout the Bahamas at an alarming rate. So the question remains, well, what are we going to do about it? So in response, In response to the decline and subsequent growing concern, a collaborative effort was initiated by conservation managers to improve the, con the conch fishery through the launch of the Conservation Campaign, which occurred in April of 2013. 
and a subsequent development of a Kong Sustainability Program. Um, just to give you a little bit of background and information on conservation, conservation is a national campaign geared towards the development of a sustainable conch fishery by um, completing a number of things. Number one, garnering local support through educational outreach initiatives, employing the latest science, and making management recommendations to the government. So, to fulfill the goals in, of the conservation campaign, um, the Nature Conservancy implemented a study of knowledge, attitudes, and practices in 2015. More specifically, the CAP was born out of the need to fill key data gaps regarding the, the Bahamians' level of awareness about the status of the fishery, how we use and value conch, and whether we really support conch conservation. The main goal of the CAP study, well, the CAP study had two, uh, it was a two-fold goal. The first being to inform the conservation campaign about the level of support in the Bahamas. Um, with respect to Bahamian support for con conservation and specific management strategies. And the second is to develop strategies that foster social and behavioral change in support of con conservation. So um, the survey methodology for the CAP included collecting data um, on knowledge, attitudes, and practices related to conch through focus groups, focus group meetings with fishers, expert interviews, and a national phone survey. Um, and this occurred in, through, the, through the months of uh, February as well as June in 2015. Um, and with respect to the focus group surveys, these occurred primarily in the islands of New Providence, Abaco and Grand Bahama. The phone survey was nationwide, and the expert interviews occurred really in New Providence. Just to give you a little bit more information, the focus group meetings consisted of about 10 to 12 fishermen um, on the islands that uh, I informed you of before, as well as the expert interviews also included persons from, the in, from industry, conservation, science, and resource management. And the nationally representative phone, sur uh, phone survey actually consisted of over 1,001 in individuals that were sampled. And this is rather important because there were concerns about the validity of the sample size and research, and it was deemed to be representative. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some findings as regards to the focus groups as well as the National Phone Survey, and I'm going to start off with the focus group. So the first finding, which is important, is that conch populations have decreased over the 25 years and that large quantities of conch in shallow areas have become more difficult to access. And these are what fishers were saying. A second finding was, according to fishers, there were three main threats affecting conch populations, which are poaching, harvesting, harvesting of juveniles, and degrading of the conch, of conch habitat. Um, we just heard uh, Claire talk about uh, the graveyard and the not conch effect. Well, this is what fishers were referring to. And the third one was the majority of fishers agree that there should be a no-take zone or a closed season to allow juvenile conch to mature as well as giving adult females an opportunity to reproduce during the mating season. Some of the findings from the National Phone Survey included the majority of respondents, about 73%, think that conch around the island are overexploited or fully exploited. The top threats are considered to be poaching, harvesting of juveniles, fishing of female conch that are pregnant, and pollution. And an overwhelming majority of respondents, 96%, strongly agreed or agreed that the government should take action to protect conch. 
And some of the conservation measures that respondents were in favor of included um, closing nursery areas, implementing closed seasons, deploying patrol boats to catch foreign fishers, and ensuring that the lip size is truly measurable. Some additional findings. I'll just breeze, breeze through these. The majority of people, over 70%, were not at all knowledgeable of, about the conservation campaign, which suggests that we have considerable work to do. Um, to, in order to complete or fulfill the educational outreach initiative that is a part of that conservation campaign. And lastly, the majority also stated that they would be very likely to sign a petition to government to protect conch. So what are some of the recommendations um, that came out of the CAP survey? Some of the recommendations, what I've done with the recommendations is it seemed rather helpful to categorize them into themes um, in order to report on the activities that were recommended for future work under the conservation campaign. And the first of which under advocacy is to inform elected officials and resource managers of the overwhelming support for conch conservation. The second is to raise well awareness of the overwhelming support of conservation um, within the public domain. And third, work with elected officials and resource managers to craft a comprehensive management scheme that includes sustainable measures that have, endorsed, that have been endorsed by the public, such as, again, uh, size limits, area closures, catch limits, and strong enforcement. Recommendations in terms of messaging, I'll just focus on the first, um, is to pilot additional conservation messages or message frames with, with different segments of the population to identify which are most effective in promoting further support for con conservation and possible behavioral change. And the last theme in terms of recommendations are behavioral change. And the first is to pilot behavioral nudges that would, or positive reinforcement and indirect influence mechanism that elicit changes in behavior. And the stakeholder groups identified are fishermen, consumers, and other community members. And these are all based on the insights of the CAP. And I'll touch on the last one to increase and improve engagement with fishers throughout the Bahamas. Um, as indicated earlier, the, the methodology in terms of the focus groups only focused on Grand Bahama, New Providence, and Freeport. But the, under the cap, it's suggesting to identify fisher groups, um, four fisher groups within the southern islands, four fisher groups with, within the central islands, and one more in the northern islands. So to wrap up, I'm just going to talk a little bit about building a sustainable fishery. And we're suggesting a three-phased approach. The Nature Conservancy has taken the lead in, con in consultation with other conservation partners to develop an effective management and sustainability program for the Bahamas conch fishery. We've initiated a project to gather data and and conduct primary and secondary research on the conch status, its economic and cultural value, and existing management, um, and existing management gaps. So the, so the three-phased approach, the first approach is review the available data and literature for conch uh, in the Bahamas and the Caribbean region. And I think most of you are part of this when we um, solicited your help asking you to review the draft for us, in which most of you uh, return the information to us. We currently have the final draft um, within our office. The second is to conduct a stakeholder analysis to assess the local economic market and consumption rates of Queen Kong throughout the Bahamas. And as, as most of you might be aware, we know very little about the local market in terms of consumption with regards to Kong. Um, so there's considerable work to be done there. And thirdly, to perform an evaluation of the Bahamas management structure for the Queen Kong to determine gaps, recommend strategies, in an effort to improve sustainability measures, and ultimately the management of the conch fishery. So uh, my concluding remarks, 
it's imperative that we take swift action based on the current stock status, increasing demand, and inadequate regulations to identify opportunities to improve our knowledge and effective management of Queen Kong populations in the Bahamas. I just would like to thank you all for listening to my talk, and we have some acknowledgments, some citations, and any questions?